Debo Samuel was carted off the field after his left knee got awkwardly twisted along with his ankle. And in this video, I'm gonna test your knowledge to see if you can figure out what you think happened here to the 49ers star player. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. If you're new here and enjoy learning about the underlying anatomy and mechanisms of different sports injuries, then please consider subscribing to support this channel and stay up to date with all future videos. I'm gonna do this one a little bit different. I'm gonna walk through the mechanism and describe what I'm seeing at his knee and his ankle, and then I want you to comment down below with what you think that mechanism will cause in terms of an injury. We'll then see if you've learned anything from watching these previous videos and if we agree. Initially, Debo was grabbing his left knee, so let's focus on that first. As he gets drugged down here on the tackle, we can see he plants a little bit with that left foot. There's really not too much of a load that comes in on the side of his left knee. If anything, the Bucks player sort of lands into his calf, lower leg on that left side. We notice that the knee is in a flexed position as opposed to being in an extended position. And if we sort of turn or try to imagine turning the camera angle, it doesn't really look like as we go through this that the knee is directly going inward or outward. It looks like we maintain a pretty neutral alignment if we trace from the front of the femur down through the tibia. Now there's some rotation we'll talk about at the ankle in a little bit here, but I don't see a drastic amount of inward movement of the knee or outward movement of the knee. It just sort of looks awkward because of how his upper body is kind of leaning over that left side as he gets taken down to the ground. As he continues to get tackled here, now we start to see a little bit more of a twisting force that's gonna go through his knee because here, remember his left foot is anchored under the Bucks player and we're still in that position of knee flexion. So now what we're gonna see is a little bit more of a twisting force applied through the knee with that foot trapped underneath the Bucks player. Really trying to scrutinize this, I don't see any clear shift in his tibia as he gets taken down to the ground. I don't see any clear dislocation or translation of his kneecap just that twisting component through the knee. Now let's talk about the ankle. So here we see Debo's left foot and ankle is planted in the turf. Because his tibia is gonna be forward a little bit relative to his ankle, that gives an angle less than 90 degrees. So his ankle is a little bit dorsiflexed as he gets taken down to the ground. And then as this continues, notice in this position where his foot is pointed relative to his knee. So his knee is kind of pointing off in this direction and his foot looks like it's pointing over here. So his foot is pointed externally relative to the shin bone. Then as this continues, we see there's a little bit of an eversion force with that continued external rotation of his foot relative to his tibia. And it really only gets more and more pronounced as he gets taken down to the ground. That foot is still stuck underneath the Bucks player, so there's more external rotation as his foot is anchored on the ground. On the regular speed play, if you look here at his foot, as he gets up off the ground right now, look how far outward his foot is pointed. And then as it comes up, we see it boom, like whip back into a neutral position. So that again shows you how much that foot was externally rotated. And your final clue is where Debo first grabs. He sort of grabs about midway up his shin. So comment down below what injuries you think these mechanisms could lead to at the knee, as well as at the ankle. Quick word from the sponsor of today's video, then we'll come back, see if we agree and walk through our anatomy. This video is sponsored by Geology, a company that provides award-winning and personalized skincare for men. Before I found Geology, I was probably like most of you out there. I'd randomly grab a skincare product off the shelf with no real idea of what I was doing, try it out for a short period of time, and then get frustrated and throw it away. Geology removes all the confusion around skincare for men. It's simple. Just click on the link below and Geology is gonna walk you through a quiz to figure out exactly what you are looking for in your own skincare routine, and then their team of dermatologists picks out exactly what you need. Then everything is shipped conveniently to your Door. My routine features an everyday face wash followed by a vital morning face cream. Then at night I repeat the face wash, use a nourishing eye cream and a repairing night cream. They also offer great products like a hair co-wash, which I've loved using. I feel like it really gets my scalp in particular nice and clean. And they also have body washes and deodorants. Right now, if you use my code DRBRIAN50, they're gonna give you an additional 50% off their award-winning trial set. And this stacks on top of other discounts or sales they might be offering. You'll also get an additional bonus offer on their brand new skin, hair, and body products. Geology also has you covered for the holidays with a number of awesome gift sets featuring their great products. The deals won't last long, so again, code Dr. Brian 50 for 50% off your skincare trial set. Thank you again to Geology for sponsoring the video, and let's get back to our learning. My number one concern for his knee would be an MCL sprain or a meniscus tear, and my number one concern for the ankle is a high ankle sprain, plus or minus a fracture of a bone called his fibula. So if you said MCL sprain and high ankle sprain, you're correct. The 49ers listed him out with an ankle injury, but initially it was a knee injury, so there still might be components of both here as we'll talk through with the anatomy. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here of a left ankle, this little ligament that runs between the fibula and the tibia is the AITFL. Basically, this is our 
high ankle sprain ligament. And what it does is it anchors that lower portion of the lower leg between the tibia and the fibula together to maintain what we call this ankle mortis, basically the talus bone in between those two. You wanna keep a nice squeeze to keep that joint stable, and that's where that high ankle sprain ligament's involved. If the foot or the ankle gets externally rotated, you push those two bones apart and you stress and pull on that high ankle sprain ligament, potentially leading to a tear. Now on the inside of the ankle, the deltoid ligaments are also going to be involved in that stability of the ankle. And then of course you have just the stability and the passive support from the fibula itself. Whenever we see these high ankle sprain mechanisms, again, it's on a spectrum. We could see everything from just a mild sprain of the ligament to a complete tear of the ligament and even sometimes a fracture of this lower portion of the fibula. You can feel this bone on yourself. If you rub down on the outside of your ankle, that bump that you feel is your fibula. It's this little area right here and it's normal to feel that bump, but all of your ankle ligaments are coming off of that bump. With our triple box here, you can see again that left foot of Debo right here gets anchored on the ground, the foot is externally rotated, and so that dorsiflexion of the ankle combined with that external rotation is going to load that high ankle sprain ligament, potentially leading to an injury and something like a fracture. As he continues to get taken down to the ground, we see a little bit of that eversion coming in, potentially stressing the deltoid ligament complex, and so that mechanism fits with what would be concerning for a high ankle sprain. I mentioned how we saw him grab higher up on his shin, and that's because this connection between the tibia and the fibula actually runs kind of all the way up the lower leg. And so that's why it was named a high ankle sprain because you can get pain higher up the leg. And there's actually some prognostic research out there that describes how high up somebody has pain as being suggestive of how severe the injury is. So as the doctor, as we're pushing along this area of the leg, the higher up you go and hurt, the worse the injury might be in terms of recovery. Sometimes the energy can get transferred all the way up that syndesmotic band to the knee. And so every time we see somebody with a high ankle sprain, we also have to check up at the knee, specifically at the head of the fibula to make sure that energy didn't exit out up at the knee and cause a crack in the bone up here. Up at the knee, remember the MCL is the ligament that runs from north to south on the inside of the knee. And I often see this injured when we have these bent knee twisting mechanisms where the knee is in flexion and you get sort of the knee caught up underneath behind you or twisted. So again, MCL potentially could be involved here and the ankle might just be taking priority. These double injury concerning locations are always tricky because Debo is probably feeling a ton of pain initially at the knee. So you look at the knee and then he gets pain at the ankle. So you check the ankle when in reality, he'll probably get MRIs of both structures and there could be injuries at both locations, which is not uncommon at all. Things that are more severe, like an ACL tear, are always on the differential with this type of mechanism, but I'd be more concerned about the ankle and that MCL. At this point in the season, a significant enough high ankle sprain could certainly be season ending, especially if there's a fracture. If it's just a high ankle sprain, remember there's something called a tightrope procedure that we've seen players like Tua Tagovailoa receive in college where you can actually get back pretty quickly. So it'd be interesting to see here the severity of if it's in fact a high ankle sprain, if there is a fracture involved, and then how things check out at the knee. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. No changing your initial answer if you guessed incorrectly, but that's all right. We're here to learn, and hopefully this video was educational. Thank you again to Geology for sponsoring the video. Check them out. It's a great way to help support this channel. And until next time, I'll see you later.